Hello, good evening. Um, as you can see, we are on for the uh, detailed <laughs> analysis of the Corgi 2022 uh, catalogue. You see, I say detailed. So I'm just going to add in uh, James and Sam. So give me a minute, guys. Just going to add them in. Bear with me. Oh, oh we're good. There Hello. you go. There's one. Howdy. Waiting for the northerner. Press accept. I don't know what he's doing. Thanks for joining, Sam. Thanks for having me, Mark. I press join, James. If you're watching, <laughs> James is going to James is going to jump on. Right. right. Hold up. Bear with me. See, I see if we can get hold of our Australian friend as well from the colonies. Wake know, him, he's been wake a very him busy up, man. So, I don't uh, mind make, waking up yours, yeah. to be fair. I've yeah. done your <laughs> and the, the cricket, oh. um, yeah, he big, um, James big welcome. Foster just declined it, he's obviously at the uh, change of art. Oh, oh, hold it. oh no, here he is. Here he is. No, in and out, in and out job. He's disappeared. Um, Bear with me. Obviously, Probably whilst we wait for what, what one? Um, James, James to <laughs> come and get started. Obviously, big welcome to everyone uh, who's joining us from the page. Um, I'm sure we'll have a uh, lot to discuss here tonight. There we go. Here he is. Hey, here we go. Oh, now I've lost Mark. Oh, oh no. I he's, can hear he's, him. He's, Where is he? <laughs> Mark's, Mark's buffering. He's loading. Buffering. Hang on. Is that better? Right, so Christian's unable to join. We're just waiting. So, a... we're just waiting. So, I don't that's know, all right. Sam was just speaking. So, obviously, tonight we've been going Mark. through a pretty detailed. Yeah, is Mark, um, is, Mark is Mark animate for you, James? He's just it's black. Oh, I there know. he is. I've got... uh, hang on, here we go. Right, hold up. I'll stop for a second. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you clear, loud and clear. Um, yeah, I got you. The signal's gone awful. He's still, he's still loading. Right, sorry, I just tried go. resetting my Wi-Fi. Is that any better? Yeah, much better, mate. Yeah, everybody. Oh, tooling signal. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is, Jason. That's what it is. Right, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, got you. Loud and clear. Hey, hallelujah. I don't know what happened there. I have literally no idea. So apologies, everyone, a few technical issues. We're missing our Australian friend. Um, he's been working incredibly hard down in New South Wales, so I'm guessing he's probably getting some well-deserved rest. And he's probably also quite angry about the lack of an Australian Canberra, as uh, Sam pointed out earlier. Uh, I'm only think Australian, in all fairness. So, uh, welcome welcome to tonight. Um, hope you've watched the earlier video. So, tonight is a bit of a detailed analysis into the Corgi 2022 um, cat catalogue. Um, it originally set out to be a lot more detailed than what we're going to do. But um, for those who watched the earlier video, you can obviously see... Um, our use of term underwhelming, um, and I think there's a lot of reasoning behind that, um, but we're, we're getting to that a little bit further uh, down the line. So just uh, again, just uh, for those who've never watched or seen these two lovely gentlemen and myself, a um, little bit of a quick introduction. So Sam, do you want to go first, mate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, as I said, um, I'm back here from the last video, which was uh, absolutely roaring success on the price increases. I feel like that is going to play a lot into today's discussion. Um, with that aside, my name's Sam, um, 23, from Cambridgeshire, a uh, big aviation collector. Uh, my collection spans World War One to modern day. I don't 
I don't discriminate in era, scale, uh, theme. It's just a bit of everything. Um, quite heavily into my armor as well. I do have quite a big uh, armor collection. Uh, and cars. So it's just die cast, die cast everything for me. Uh, nothing, nothing is off limits. But yes, I uh, work for an insurance broker. Uh, it's very, very boring. But yeah, pays the bills. And that's uh, that's it. That's life for me. So I shall hand over, of course, to James. Cheers, Sam. Hi, uh, James, thirty-six, thirty-seven. Not 38, sorry, 38. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> That's the first time to dementia, that. Let's <laughs> think about that, yeah, 38. When it start. <laughs> uh, Blackpool, uh, this will be a good video for me, as my collection is almost all Corgi, 172. Uh, Bomber Command, mostly. Uh, all the heavies, uh, Malta, Polish. Um, so it's, it's a good a good one to do. Um my theme is all World War Two, no jets. Uh, there's just no room for them whatsoever. The World War Two stuff just takes over for me. Um, and that's about it for me. Over to the big man. Cheers, mate. So for those who probably know me enough now, because I've been on so many bloody videos, waffling on and ranting and raving. My name's Mark Stringer, um, one of the the three guys who sort of founded the original Corgi Diecast Aviation page, which then became the DWC, as we didn't want to interfere with Corgi's activities. Um, so I've been a collector since 2006, the early model day uh, zone days, um, and I've now acquired a massive collection, which I'm really, really proud of. Um, that's uh, slightly worrying. Uh, <laughs> is that your message, James? Yeah. <laughs> What the, 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 the Spitfire, the Spitfire on the wall. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so yeah, I had a collection for a long, long time. Obviously, known James for a number of years. Um, you know, and I love going. So I'm, I'm a World War Two fan, and he's off. He's off. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, your family always comes first. So yeah, um, I managed to set up my collection this year for the first time ever. It's out of the shed, the self storage, and my mum's shed. Um, and I'm predominantly a World War Two collector, but I'm very eclectic in what I collect. So mine, like, very, like Sam's, spans from World War One all the way through to modern jets. Um, yeah, and th that, that's a little bit about me. So um, obviously James has just had to shoot off and pair of duties, he's, which, is, like I said, is much more important than run. what we're all talking about tonight. Um, so yeah. we've got a bit of an agenda tonight <laughs> in terms of what to go through. So I'll start with Sam. So in real honesty here, and call it like it is, What's your first impressions of today's catalogue and the announcement and how it's all been handled? Okay, so are we are we going to speak in terms of first the um, the re-releases? Um, should we tackle, I feel like, um, I mean, I'll just name general delays, overview. Delays, way of putting it, isn't it? Delays, yeah. Um, it was un underwhelming. Let's, let's, let's put it like that. I think a lot of us were expecting a lot more. Obviously, you do have to make allowances because of COVID, everything that's happened. Uh, I really do get it. However, it is, compared to previous years, what, what we've been seeing, what we've been seeing in January, and the way the way it's been sort of launched to not, not as much as a fanfare as last year. Uh, I, I feel like I represent the views of a fair few people to say they're slightly disappointed. However, there is some stuff to be quite happy about especially if you're if you're into spitfires potentially oh here's, here's james he's back in the three two one back in the room there we go and uh yeah so if you are if you are into your spitfires the, the new the new mark nine the new uh tr9 it's gonna be fabulous i uh really really looking forward to that when, when it comes it probably i would surmise it would not be this year because new tooling it's gonna it's gonna take some time when it does release so Particularly in those first couple of schemes with the with the grey grey nurse, it, I think absolutely fantastic. Um, so there's a lot to be a bit irked about. We've already touched on the side of prices, which I'm sure is going to be touched on again. But there's a lot to be a bit disappointed about as well. Um, that's that's a general. I'm sure we're going to discuss the models sort of on a, on an individual basis. But that's my general feeling. I think under the circumstances, it is what it is. And we have to, we have to unfortunately deal with it. 
No, it's a really good assessment. Uh, just a quick a good evening to everyone who's just joined. Um, what I will say before I get on to James, any questions, I've got my notepad here so I can note them down. Um, so I'm more than happy to, we're doing, we've got a section at the end for any questions that we, um, we may miss. So between me, James and Sam, we'll try and note them all down for you. So James, so obviously you was out the room. Um, first impressions of the catalogue um, and how has made you feel a little bit? Uh, underwhelming. Massively, massively underwhelming. It's it just wasn't what we were expecting. You know, there should have been a bit of a bit of a, you know a bit of a bang, something to say. Oh, you know, that's gonna blow me away. I like that, but it was mediocre at best. It was it was poor, and you know your big thing. You've got it. Everything going into it was just wrong the announcement of it was non-existent the timing was all off everything about it was just off as if it was an afterthought and then when it dropped your highlights which are going to be your new toolings were just not there no pre-pro not enough information just nothing nothing whatsoever just a tiny tiny little afterthought at the very very end of the yeah. the catalogue it was Really disappointing. Uh, there was some, you know, great. The 148 Harrier, that was, uh, that'll be good because they, they say they're covering all the US, the AV8 Harrier, the the British Harriers. That the Harrier will be fantastic. Um, everything else, not so much, to be honest. No. So, yeah, just to get my little bit across, really, um, I think I covered a lot of it in the previous video. I think, you know, if you start from the journey all through it, you know, the, one of the things we said in the pricing bin, one of the, bits I'm, the points I made, it feels like Korg is a bit of an afterthought. And today, it felt exactly like that, a little bit. Um, you know, from the build-up, there was nothing. That, you know, they did the work in the advent calendar and then stopped. Um, and uh, it took, I believe it took you to ask the question on the Corgi Instagram page to get a definitive answer as to what time. So we were all working on the basis it was a four o'clock release because we had no information. Uh, we thought we'd go alongside Airfix. You asked the question, they said six o'clock and they went at five o'clock. And it, it, again, in terms of times a day, it felt like it got the, um, the after lunch speech, if you know what I mean. You know, that bit when you do training days and that bit and you come back from lunch and everyone's lethargic and that real long hour and a half session <laughs> that everyone has to sit there and watch and nobody gives a shit. It felt like that. It felt a bit at the end. But then on the plus side, three really, really exciting moulds. You know, not that I want to blow too much smoke up my bum, but sort of predicted them. Um, I'm really happy with all three. I think, you know, like the, the Harry will be stunning. You know, if you work on the basis of what the Typhoon's looking like, the Lightning and the Phantom, it's going to be amazing. Really, really good. A new Spitfire 9 and a TR9, which adds to a different variant to the ones that you can buy, it's going to be on par with Gemini. I don't doubt that. Um, and it's going to be amazing. It's, you can do iconic schemes like MH434 and, you know, potentially an 11. I don't know if it, that can be remodeled into that or, or a 6 of uh, a 16 whatever it may be there's going to be options there to do stuff like that that's brilliant but again getting going back again it felt like it didn't get the the service it deserved but then when i thought more about it what will probably happen is when michael does diecast diaries it will probably do a big feature on diecast diaries which will drive some traction into that as well so there is thought process behind it i think overwhelmingly the first feeling is disappointment you know that's the bit that everyone's like Oh God, I really wanted days of old, 20 different new planes on there. We knew there's going to be three new tall ends. But then with everything that's gone on in the world, is it really, really a massive, massive problem that we're all sitting here waiting for a Corgi catalogue? No, there's bigger fish to fry than that, unfortunately. Um, you know, is it, this isn't Corgi v. Hobbymaster v. JC Wings v. Calibre, because all of them screw up. It doesn't matter. It's not one's better than the other. You know, you know I've seen some of the chat tonight on some of the Facebook groups and it's pretty pathetic to be honest with you mm. so take a little bit of perspective I did think they would go hard in, in Cat 1 
and then ease it off cat two and go big on the golden quarter or, or golden third as it is in their way and finish strong but they've taken a different route so it is what it is you know their strategy not ours we're not the businessmen here so they might be absolutely bang on the money um, what what but, i can sort of see happening the first the first third is they're using the toolings that have been delayed for the previous catalog to fill to yeah. fill those gaps and to just to just carry them through to just to survive that's that's what's taking place i think that's what we're seeing happening and that's why there's only three reliveries it's not because yeah you know, they perhaps wants to put three out it's because of de- props because of delivery times space in the way out there could be all sorts of um logistical issues cost issues that are playing into that but that's what i think is happening i think the delays have kicked back the whole the whole catalog and that could possibly play into why they're now doing the four yeah. monthly ones i think yeah. it, it, it makes sense so i guess use a retail analogy one of the things you're told as a manager is never over promise under deliver and I think they did that in last year's catalogs. This year, they've started with a very different mentality. They've under promised, but they're going to over deliver because they're going to, all this stuff, which is in the first catalog, uh, catalog, January to April, their plan to get consumer confidence back in them is to make sure all of those eight or nine or whatever it is are all knocked out by April. And they do that they've got a mini win. Suddenly they turned a real negative into a positive. So they look like they're back on track and they're back on track in terms of mm. um, their, their manufacturing. And that makes a, a big difference in the way they go about their business, the mentality. And, and again, you, know, you talk yeah. about confidence as well. Um, it also says to me that some of those models probably haven't sold as well as perhaps they'd like them to as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, uh, not not another train says, uh, which is probably something I've said quite a lot watching Hornby and Model World. Uh, says Sterling was a surprise, though. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We we we'll get to that. We will definitely get to that. Yeah. Then I look. Sorry, I've waffled on too long there, lad. So let's get on to the new mould. So three new moulds: a one forty eight Harrier GR. Uh, I think it's a GI five. Is it GI five to nine? I think they're doing, uh, including the US one, the Spanish one as well. Um, a Spitfire Mark 9, yes, yes, yes. And a Spitfire TR9, yes, yes, yes. Although Adam, who's watching, absolutely hates them. Um, for me, a win, win, win. So uh, start with James on this one. James, thoughts on the three new moulds? Good. The Harrier. The Harrier will be fantastic. Um, I've no doubt about that. I'm- even though I've not seen anything of the Harrier, I'm highly, highly confident that they'll absolutely nail that one. It's 148. It's a bigger size. It's easier to, to look at and, and nitpick. So I'm highly confident that the Harrier will be, it'd be brilliant. I'm not a Jet fan, but the Harrier, great choice. The Spitfires. I would love to have seen a pre-pro. Yeah. Or anything yeah. anything that would have tweaked that interest just a little bit more. Because it's just left your imagination. You know, you're thinking, right, well, I know I'm getting a T9, but I've not seen the T9. I've got to look at pictures of the T9 on Facebook or the internet to just get my imagination around that one. It's They didn't deliver on the Spitfires where they, they should have done. They should have gone yeah. big. They should have gone really big on those Spitfires because people have been crying out for those two in particular, the Mark 9 and the two-seater Spit. They've been crying out for those for years. And Corgi have now delivered in the poorest, poorest way possible. They couldn't have done any worse. Um, But I'm confident that that they'll be good. It's going to be different with the, with the new wing management. I mean, they said, what well, if we got the C to the E wings for the Mark 9? So, with the C to the E wing, I'm thinking that Corgi may actually be giving us a Mark 5 as well. Yeah. Or a C fire, as Jason just put. I was just about to say that. And also 16, yeah? A 16 yeah. uses... Yeah, it's yeah. highly possible because 11. the bodywork is exactly the same. What about a Griffin 12? It, I don't really know too much about that. I'm going to go to Adam on that, who's watching. Adam, what wing <laughs> does a Griffin 12 use? 
Adam's it's, done. It's Wait, Adam's like frantically typing away. He's like, Jesus, why did you ask me a question? But it's Adam, the, Adam's the man on, on this sort of thing to go to. But, so you know, it makes you wonder if there's interchangeable fuselages. Yeah, it, well, it, it, it just makes sense because if they said, right, we've got the Spitfire, we've now got the different wings we can now put on that fuselage. Well, effectively, as long as you can take that engine out and put a three blade in there, you've got a Mark V already. All you've got to do is stick them mm. wings on there. So, it's but what's the wing, Adam? What Mark, a Mark Twelve is a Mark V. Oh, it is a Mark V with Griffin Six on the front. So yeah, you can do Mark Twelve then. Yeah, all you've got to do is change them. It's, it, yeah, so they can use the Mark Twelve again. So then that adds five. Um, is it the seven that's the large? the high altitude wing as well. One with the extra wing tips. The high well, altitude wing. So potentially there's there's a lot of scope. Yeah. Between well, you've got that. like the, the C, I mean, I'm not that clued up with the Spitfire wing, but the C wing is the one that has, I think the two cannons on it, which yeah. the multi Spitfire currently has. I think that's a C wing. Then you've got the, the other wings, which are, so one of the wings I think is the, um, that the E wing, the E wing is the photo reconnaissance wing. It's got no guns in it. Yeah. So that tells me, well, hang on, if we've got the mark, yeah, mark then we've 11. got yeah. we've got an NHS Spitfire. There you so, go. A, a C Fire 15 is a navalized Mark 12 2, I think. There yeah. you go. So, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. It's there for them to do. If they miss that opportunity, then everybody that works in Corgi for the aviation range mm -hmm. should be sacked. And everybody in this room should be hired. Because <laughs> you know in. what, though? I think, it's that, I think this, is the, this is the key. Because if you think in terms of savings on toolings, you know, the Mark V and the Mark IX were different toolings originally, and not very good ones at that. This mm. is, if it's, that's the case, it's a masterstroke. Absolute masterstroke. Yeah. And uh, fair play to them. But obviously, yeah. I'm not giving that away. But mm. you might have just but if you, out, if you look at the, the new... Mark, well, not new now, but the Mark Two, Mark One, Mark Two Spitfire. We've got the new one. Yep. The engine is built into the fuselage, whereas with the old mode, it wasn't. You could take the no, yeah, top yeah, off and take the cover off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They did that with the Stuka ME One Hundred and Nine Mustang, and it does yeah. give you a clean. Yeah, but mm. they're gonna need if they're gonna make it say a Mark Five, they're gonna need to be able to change that engine because you'd have to take some of the exhaust ports out from six to three. Propeller from four to three, it's doable though. It's absolutely doable. You can make that nine a five, and you've yeah. got a new five mold. Or they're going to tell us two years down the line, hey, we've got another new tooling for you. We've now got a new Mark Five, and they haven't. It's been there all along. You know, and we'll look back on this conversation in two years' time. Yeah. But no, yeah. back on track. Fantastic. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Mark Nine and especially the. Uh, T9. Just need to see the current, the, the current Mark V. <laughs> yeah, not shocker. good. Not good. So Absolutely Kieran's just on terrible. Mate. How you doing? Um, Kieran just said Mark 9 is a good business sense and Colgate, most recognisable, numerous Mark U's. I'm sure other variants will come depending on the nice success. I think it's spot on, mate. I think you nailed it. I think James has nailed it. Uh, I think it's, it's exciting. That, that, that excites me. I know sitting looking at me by a Spitfires now where there's not an inch of room to get another one in there. I'll find some fucking room. I don't care. I'll, I'll buy every Spitfire that's released. It's, I absolutely yeah. love it. Sorry, Sam, on to you, mate. I'm taking over. Absolutely. Um, so the Harrier, I'm very excited about uh, being a bit of a, being a bit of a Falklands aficionado because it's like a recent conflict. It's like, it's quite easy to study and learn about. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot there for me. I mean, they're bringing in the Falklands range. I mean, the, the Strike Vulcan might be the Vulcan I actually end up buying if the if the price comes down enough, just because it's something a bit different. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Either, either, well, either that or your Colombian drug business goes well, yes. through the roof. Yeah, yeah, some of that. Get, get, get exporting some of that Colombian marching powder. No. But, um, <laughs> all right, so... the you give the game yes, away now, Sam. <laughs> no, well, uh, that's the thing. I mean, to, to, to do up for different mark, I like what they've done with both of them because you've got two new toolings, but you've actually got several in that in two distinct yeah. bubbles. I, I like the way they've done that. They need to promote it more. 
they need to promote it more. They need to really go hard rather than, you know, I've got the Corgi website in front of me now. Nowhere. It's nowhere to be seen. I think I saw, I saw the, that they were doing it on Facebook. I saw that they were doing it on model hanger. Someone shared a, like a PDF document of the, the, the sort of the catalog share, but it's, I'm on the featured products and they're just, they're nowhere and they should be front and center because that's, that's what really sort of gets people excited. They, they, they should be really on there. Um, you know, just to, just to, to build that anticipation for them. I, mean, I know the, the, the three re-releases are coming out first, but you've got to get those Spitfires and those Harriers up there. Like last year where there was headline on the site, the uh, 148 Eurofighter, boom, in your face. So, yeah, I think marketing marketing needs a good look at. But back to the toolings if i may absolutely fantastic you know we've sort of waited a long time for a new spitfire i think it's been about oh i want to say about when was the mark one about 10 years and then just before that the um the, the, the 14 the most the two most recent one it's been a while it's been a it's been a hot minute before before we've had a spit so yeah absolutely fantastic uh in terms of the two seaters, we've we've talked about this before. The sales potential, people, you know, going up in them and then being presented with one. Um, I see they're working with the heritage flight there. It's fantastic to get that, um, to get those out. Perhaps they'll have like a like a, a stand of them at at Biggin Hill. Why not? You know, perhaps perhaps that'll be a thing that they actually end up doing. But yeah, it's um. New, new tooling's are fantastic. They just need to be, they need to be pushed a little bit more. Is my opinion. Yeah, but just to echo what you guys have said, I'm not going to stretch it out too long. I'm really excited by them. The more we talk about the Spitfire, the more everything sort of makes sense. Um, that they could sort of vary different marks through, and, and then that opens up different theatres. It opens up different types of the aircraft and what it was used for. Um, you know, a, a Mark 11 is a big hole in 172. As much as Hobby Masters one, 148 version is really nice, I can't be mixing scales. It just looks weird. Um, I just want a fleet of the same for me. So, look, really excited. Um, you now, I did speak to uh, Michael, and he basically said, you know, they looked at a, a Shah, but it probably wasn't the right decision to do in 148 because it would limit... Um, how much um, they could do with it, really, which I, I sort of, I really get. The the GR versions opens up, obviously, the US Marines, it opens up the Spanish Navy, I guess Indian Navy, if they want to go down that route as well. Um, but it's really, really exciting. And it will be, you know, the detail in the latest is, you know, I'll use the, the Phantom as the example, the detail in that is brilliant. And, you know, Cold Gear really, really nailed it. So fair play to him. Um, Adam's put, disappointed there's no die-cast bouchons. Yet, Adam. Yet, so I, I think that's one to be done personally. Um, I mean, we, we can talk that about at the end, but um, yeah, no, I mean, no, and we've gone from a real negative to a real positive there. Um, uh, but mm. all of it comes down to execution, doesn't it? And um, we spoke about the marketing and wanting to. It just, it just felt like it just wasn't there. It, re it really did. But there you go. Right, anyhow, so we're now going to go on to the actual models and we're going to score them. So the, the three, we haven't spoke too much detail about the models. So the three models released were the P-51 Detroit Miss, the iconic yellow-nosed or yellow-cowled uh, Mustang, which I believe, Adam, is there not one that's meant to be rebuilt at some point at Cywell? Unfortunately, Dan's not on. He wouldn't be able to tell us anyhow because he's under like a, a non-disclosure uh, agreement. But I believe that's the one that's meant to come back to to Airworthy at some point in the future. We've got the new Sterling, which is right up um, our Northern Friends Street, who's a big Bomber Command fan. Not that anyone would have any room to put the bloody thing, because it's huge. And of course, speaking of huge, the Black Buck Vulcan, the one that um, actually uh, diverted to Rio de Janeiro, um, which Dan would be obviously incredibly excited about if he was on tonight. He's not feeling too good, so I'm feeling better, mate. Um, so let's go through them. So very brief talk through. So P51, James, what would you score that out of 10? How much did it excite you? If it's got two, uh, two drop tanks, then <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It's a, it's a really nice looking P51. 
It's it's fantastic P51. My only criticism of that is why not Ferocious Frankie? Mm. Ferocious Frankie would have maybe done a bit better because it's an airshow one, it's a war one, people have seen it, it may have just given it the edge, but uh, still a fantastic looking P51 uh, and a pretty well publicised one at that. So there's no, there is, there's enough history of that P51 Detroit Miss and enough photographs out there Corgi Carl oh, mind you the one they've already shown us they said is the complete one um, it, yeah I like it it's good it's nice so out of 10 8 8 good scoring you say mm -hmm. ferocious Frankie I raise you Candyman Moose now that that is a Mustang I could really get behind. Or Frenese. Frenese, 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 I don't know what it's called. I get it, but I, I, was going, I was going with the... Uh, the three Frenese. Nuts. Yeah, <laughs> so I was sticking with the, the same fighter group because Frocious Frank is in the same fighter group as Detroit Miss. Yeah. Good call. Good call. So, Sam? A little bit um, Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with Jones on that one. I'm going to say a solid eight. It's, uh, I was reading the... Uh, the story behind it, behind the pilot, absolutely fantastic. I would have liked, ideally, 350 seconds, but I think if if, if this is if this is what we got for the new mold, I think it's really starting to grow into its potential. After it kind of it kind of stagnated with the releases that were coming out. Sorry to say, you know the 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 RAF one, the 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 Korea one. Not no no a, a, a bit of a bit of a waste in my opinion but here we are it's a lovely lovely looking aircraft uh, with a, a fantastic story behind it I think it's going to be a really really good seller um, I particularly like the the highlights of red splashed about here and there the you know sort of around the around the gun ports around the canopy um, it, it it just it, it looks it looks nice and it's going to have it's going to have some nice shelf presence i think especially next to next to a lot of other mustangs it that's that's going to stand out i mean for you mark you've got you've got 10 to a dozen of them so you know it's going to be <laughs> no me, who me no, no but you know it's uh it's and it, it has to it has to stand out at the end of the day um but yeah lovely solid eight and perhaps a bit of a a bit of a saving grace for the for the catalogue, really. I noticed on the on the Facebook video, it had the paper drop tank, similar to Happy Jack's Go Buggy, or what yeah. Happy Jack's Go Buggy should have had. It had the paper tanks. I, I've I don't know because I've seen I've seen it with the um, the standard ones as well. I don't I, I don't know what's um, what's what's accurate there. I'm assuming because it's slightly later on in the war. They probably would use both though. In all fairness, probably um, most um, likely. Uh, you know, I think it was ever they had to hand, if I was to be really honest with you. Um, mm. But, well, I mean, look, I mean, you can nitpick it. I'm, I'm, I mean, drop tank so many. But I think that is one slight issue with the Corgi stand, other than the fact that some of them only come with one drop tank, um, is they're not detachable. And is that, that might be the one thing that lets it down from the Dragon, I guess, and the sliding canopy. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't drop and change, can you? No. No, I mean, I'm, I mean, you could put bombs on it as well. I mean, that's again, you know, adding in that forces of valor thing. They might not execute the aircraft quite as well as Colgi, but they give those little bits that we talked about earlier in terms of that finesse bit. But um, yeah, so eight out of ten, I'm going for you on that, Sam. Yeah, yeah, take it. Solid. I've, I've given it just to be awkward. Eight and a half. I don't think it's a nine. I don't think it's an eight. Um, it's a brilliant looking scheme. Uh, iconic aircraft. Uh, brilliant model, you know. Let's not beat around the bush. We can nitpick it, but it is a massive upgrade on the old Mustangs. I mean, it even as undercarriage that fits, which is, I mean, for anybody who had Mustangs for a number of years, you'd always walk back your Mustang shelf. One would collapse, it would set off like a domino effect to the rest of your shelf. But he's doing his ironing, isn't he? You're doing your ironing there, James. So I've well, got I, was, I was, I was checking the Mustang, the new Mustang with the drop tanks. Oh, okay. I thought, oh, I wonder if they, do they come off? No, they don't. No. Yeah, you're right. They don't come off. <laughs> I'm going well, broken it. Well, they he's do pulled, now. He's pulled off the one he glued on an Happy Jack's Go Buggy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, I was. Uh, I was actually. I was fortunate enough to to receive uh, Happy Jack's Go Buggy with with both of them attached. I think a whole a wholesaler did it. Yeah. You know, pre when when they came out, and 
no, lovely, lovely model, lovely scheme, but it's just a shame how how it all how it all went down. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this time around they've um they've 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 learned the lesson and, and they won't be that oversight won't be happening again. But well, yeah, lovely, lovely aircraft. I guess there's going to be better communication between the factory and yeah, but Paul just to, just to play on that that one drop tank. David Mather, the chief executive, whatever yada 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 for Corgi, on his LinkedIn page, his very first line is, "I have a heavy interest in accuracy and research." I call bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't go back. Don't go back. No. Right. no. no. Well, that's, that's the first thing on his. See a red dot on his head in a minute where he's sitting yeah. in the bushes mm. outside well, his I mean, house. If that was the case. We wouldn't have the problem with drop tanks, and Corgi would be selling a hell of a lot more than they are. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, we spoke about this on the the pricing one. I think the problem is the communication between the UK and China. And look, if you look, and we use Noel as an example, Noel practically lived in his factory, yet they couldn't execute what Noel wanted, and that no. says a lot. That that really does say a lot. And he, you know, speaking to Noel, um, I won't say too much, but I get the impression that the factory started deliberately mucking up just to not mm. really get his work. And, you know, sometimes they do that. If some, someone's being too pernickety, too demanding, too strenuous, they yeah. probably think, well, get easy money going elsewhere. So mm. I, I don't know whether that's, I'm not saying the Corgi have yeah. that issue, but maybe that's something to focus on because, yeah. like I said, the pricing <laughs> prices, they need to, they need to yeah. be bang on it. And, and yeah. therein, therein lies Hobby Master's success because they are the factory, right? Yep. They are, they are the factory. Not well, said. Yeah, that does make sense. It makes complete sense. Right, on to the second one. So go to you first, James. So the Sterling. Thoughts? Um, it's nice. I like it. Will it sell? I don't know. I've no idea because, like you say, it's a big bit of kit. And a big bit of kit. Yeah, not happening. It's nice, but I'm not paying 175 quid for that. I've got a sterling, and I don't want any more. They're just they're too big. But it, yeah, it looks all right. But what baffles me is why they've picked that sterling over every other sterling because it's hard to find any pictures of. The Gremlin teaser in one nine nine squadron. Sorry. It's got a bit of cramp there. <laughs> it it looks good. I like it, but it's not one that I'd be getting. I've got uh I've got the other I've got two of the other ones, and that's enough. Yeah. It's just it's it's a lot of money for what it is. Just for effectively just for that bit of nose art. There doesn't seem to be much backstory to it and you're paying 175 quid effectively for that little bit of nose art on a sterling. So it's nice. Uh, six, six and a half out of ten for me, but not one yep. that I'll be getting. Okay. Sam? I've sort of never been a particular fan of a sterling, not not really just the, the, the tooling, but the, the actual aircraft, you know, next to a, Next to a Halifax or a Lank, it's just it's just a bit of an ungainly thing for me. I get that in 172 diecast, um, I'm sure it's a very very impressive model. I don't have one personally. I mean, it, just on that basis, will I go for it? Probably not. But I like the nose art. I think that's something a bit. It's something a bit interesting. A bit, dare I say it, a bit safe. You know, I feel like they could have maybe you know like like what they did with the Lancaster last year, found a, a really a really sort of funky one because it needs to be that because of the because of the price and because of the the size of it it needs to be something that you you, you see it and you think oh yeah that's that's something a really nice a bit different i'm going to absolutely plump for that so yeah never never been really much of a sterling fan if i'm going to be honest would have rather um i I'd probably not love that probably another another halifax something something nice um maybe a Friday 13th free release, but hey, I don't know. Uh, Hamden would have been very, very, very nice. I think it's coming, but not yet. Yeah. Five and a half, if I'm being generous, but I'm, as I say, I'm not, I'm going to be biased because I'm just not, I'm just not a fan of the actual aircraft itself. I, 
I don't know. For me, for me, they're a little bit ugly, but there we go. Yeah, so uh, sort of echo both what you said, really. Um, feels a bit of um, a safe middle of the road sort of release. However, on the flip side, it will be executed well. I absolutely know that. The, the two Sterlings I've in the, in the collection are stunning. Mm. And there's not really an awful lot about them two. I've not got McRoberts. I've got the other two, um, whose names escape me. James, help me out. Who are the two? One was Aaron, Arthur Aaron, isn't it? Yeah, is one. BC and... Don't know what the other one is. <laughs> Can't remember. Begins with M. I'm pretty certain it comes. Anybody online who knows what the second Sterling is? Um, somebody says, you've got McRoberts, you've got Arthur Aaron and Middleton. There you go. I knew it began with M. Thank you very much. Not another train. Uh, so I've got Aaron and Middleton, and both of them are great. But again, you look at them individually as schemes, they're just pretty plain Jane, to be honest with you. They're but identical. Sort of... Sorry? They're identical. Yeah, but, so, but a little bit of you know a serial code or a silver bit on the tail, they're identical. Yeah, and I think mm. this is pretty much in that same group. So yeah. look, as much as I, I'll have a look at it, whether I'll pull the trigger in it, I don't know because I need to see more of the catalogue and make the decisions where I'm going to buy it. And that's the difference this year that yeah. I'm not going to steal one. Harder, harder to get wrong space. than a Wellington. A lot harder to get wrong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be. Um, I mean, for me, I've gone. I've gone for seven, um, which for me is good, but not bad. Um, but um, it'd be interesting to see how well it sells, though, because like I said in terms of the size. But now I said this about the Sunderland; they end up with three bloody Sunderland. So, because of the size, people will look at how much room they've got in their collections, and that's why it's is it the sixth Vulcan now, isn't it? Which we'll get to in a minute could catch them out to a degree. However, they didn't do a great job on the first Black Buck Vulcan. So uh, as long as they don't use decals, that's another bit for discussion in a minute. But yeah, I've gone for seven. So that average is out at 19 divided by three. So about 6.3333333333333 is the average on that one, which I think is about right. To be really honest with you, the average on the Mustang was about 8.1, so uh, well, about 8.15.7777. So, so Mustang average is just over eight, the uh, Sterling average is just over six. So, the final one, Mr. Vulcan, Mr. Black Buck, oh, I nearly said it, Black Buck Vulcan, <laughs> another slip of the tongue. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go to Sam with this one first. Sam, thoughts on it? very very nice uh as i say it might be when it comes you know if i can sort of work my magic get it get it through the right retailer through the right channels it might be the vulcan that i actually decide yeah i want to part part some cash with that one um i was sort of i so i missed out on the first few i said i'll just get the next one because they because they keep they like they like buses they just keep they just keep coming along so yeah and the, the, the history of that coupled with the strike i think someone someone's done a very nice uh code three jobby of of um of a strike vulcan i forget forget where i saw it but it was it was absolutely fantastic and you know no no doubt this will be sales i think they're gonna start to struggle to get their money back from from this i think i think because it's because they've 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 just put out so many of them and they're they're absolutely massive and the the, the price like of them Ham. now, yeah, what's that West Ham? I, I said like West Ham, absolutely massive. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah two 0 No, we won't be there. He's not on tonight. I can't rub it in. Uh, Arsenal did no. well, James. By the way, just... what? No. I said Arsenal did well, didn't they? <laughs> Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gunner as well, so. <laughs> but yeah, the Vulcan, absolutely, it, it looks stunning. The, the the shots that we're seeing of it, it's not, it's not great. I mean, they've 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 obviously angled it so we can see the undersides of the strike. I quite like to see more of the more of the top side of it. Um, I think I don't know if that's a pre-pro. It looks like a CAD CAD image to yeah, me. I don't know what's going. Yeah. Yeah, what's 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 going on with that one? But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And if you've got the black buck, the original, and the 
the roundels hadn't peeled off, I think it would be a, it would potentially be a good a good pairing for it. Um, so I'm going to probably score that on par with the Mustang eight pushing. No, we'll go eight point five for that one for me. Eight point five. All right, James, you're up. Uh, I like it. I don't collect Vulcans. Um, the big thing for this one is they've got to get it out by April, June at the absolute, yeah. absolute latest. Um, there's three Falklands aircraft, I think he said. The Falklands was April, April till June. That gives them, you know, a three-month period to get those three out. It's not going to happen, I don't think. But the Vulcan aside, I like it. But I don't collect jets. Um, so to me, it just, it looks exactly the same as all the other Vulcans. To my untrained eye, bar these missiles underneath. Um, if that's accurate, which I'm not, I don't know if it is, I have no idea. Then it's different. But would it sell? I don't know, because the price is, it is absolutely extortionate. That is a month's worth of mortgage. Yeah. Mm. For that big bit of kit. And if you've already got five or six other Vulcans, are you going to give up a month's mortgage for an extra one? It's, I don't know. It's nice. Mm. I'd give it seven out of ten. It's nice, seven out of ten, but it's just one, I think mm. it's one Vulcan too many now. So as nice as it is, as much as I like it, I do think they'll struggle because it's just far, far, far too much money. I was going to make a very ill-timed um, Prince Andrew joke then about Prince Andrew flying his... A bit like Prince Andrew flying his Wessex. No sweat. But I thought I better, I thought I better not. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit, of, a bit of a dodgy one for the minute. Um, so on. The, so what was, your, what was your score on it, James? Sorry, mate. Seven. Seven, yeah. See, I've got I've gone seven as well. Um, it's a lovely looking release. Is it a survivor as well with that aircraft? Uh, five nine seven. <laughs> is it a Norwich? Or am I making so, that up? I'll Google it after. I don't. I, I don't. I think the majority of them are, especially the Falklands one. Um, probably it may may oh, well be Scotland. Jason said Scotland. So, yes. Is it a full survivor, Jason, or is it just a bit of it left? I, I, part of me says it's a survivor. Um, I just don't know how much of it's left because they're generally, they're generally still with Scotland since Scotland twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, there we uh, go. Yeah, well, it looks like it's survival then. So that's a good, that's a good, uh, it's full. Oh, yeah. Hell. It's not one they've chopped up. Cause I think they chopped up one near you, didn't they, James? Yeah. Relatively recently? Uh, well, it wasn't recently. It was about 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. our gate garden at the airport and they just yeah. cut up and got is rid it wood, of it. Is it wood, was it a Woodford one? Chopped up, or is there one at is there one at Woodford that's running? I, I get so confused. With um, it. I don't know about Woodford. Um, there's a couple. That's near you as well, isn't it? Woodford's just up the road. Woodvale. Wood, oh, Woodvale. Yeah, the Avril Museum. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there's a complete one there, and there's a okay, couple of East Fortune. Cheers, Andy. Huge large sections. So that's good. So yeah, Survivor as well. So. I guess if, if that's the basis, then the next one at the um, Colgi workroom should be the one at South End. All things going well. That's a runner. Um, but yeah, look, for me, it's I, I love a Vulcan. The first thing I look at, and I think Dwayne uh, just mentioned it on there, yeah. that's four fighters. Would would have been two Lancasters, but not anymore. Uh, might be you know three Beauforts worth of of. Um, purchase now do you want to spunk probably the wrong term to use on a thing like this but <laughs> do you do you want to spunk 240 notes or 240 sheets whatever you want to look at it on on a model plane and i love it but probably not um mm. if it's going to be your only purchase out of the cat catalog though why not go for it and that's not to say it's it's a bad release it's a lovely release and we've seen the vulcans and they're good and i know there's a plastic content argument but they're bloody amazing aircraft they're really well executed 
the exception of the previous Black Buck one. And I think that's why it's tied in, because they know they made a bit of a, a faux pas on the first one with decals. And I think this one will be tampo printed to the hilt and looking absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, I've gone seven. So that averages out at around about seven and three quarters. So the winner of the three is the P51 that averages uh, just over eight. Then you've got the Vulcan at seven and three quarters and the Sterling at just over six. Uh, the fact that we're just reviewing three just seems really, really weird, but that's the um, order they've, they've come out. Um, so um, but I think what the key thing is to say is that there isn't a bad release of them three. I think all three have got their merits to them. Um, it's just, if you used to buy all three, it's 175 quid plus 240 plus 60. So you're looking at 475 quid for three aircraft. That's 60. the reality. Which is 60? Uh, the Mustang. 60 quid? 59.99. Yeah. 59.99. Sterling, 174.99. Vulcan, 239.99. Yeah. But from the, main, from the main retailers, you'd be looking at about maybe 55 for that? The, yeah, 50, yeah, 55. Mustang, something like I'm looking that. at Andy. He's going to do it for 20 quid from me, Andy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, yeah, yeah. I think around about you know, between 50 and 55, I reckon. 52, 50, maybe something like that. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think Antics had theirs up for 54 quid. Yeah. Elliot and Kieran Ron might be able to tell me uh, if they're both on still, if they're not got bored. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain they messaged me and so said it was like 54 quid or something like that, or 55 quid. Which All is I can still, say is... Thank goodness for the Andy Becks and the Al Buchanans of this world, because I probably wouldn't still be. I, I, I'd have, to, I'd, I'd have to throw in a towel. I, would, I really Absolutely. would. I uh, really would. I'd also like to add, despite Andy's amazing prices, he's also a very naughty man trying to sell me all this stuff. So um, it has, has its merits. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and it also shows you to look around. You know, don't accept one price off of anybody you know look look and and haggle and like i said no i always go to to andy now and andy's an absolute top top mm. uh, top man so thanks for that andy so yeah. that, and, and to the next bit um and this is float we've been on for nearly an hour so thank you for all sticking with us uh, guys and remember any questions put them in the in the comments and we can ask them at the end i've got a couple already um so the future for 2022 for colgi so what do you see coming um in the second and third catalogues. And I mean, we've mentioned the Falklands, so we've got two more releases to come now. What do you think? And we've got a Spitfire 9 and a Spitfire TR9 to come. <laughs> By gone well, would be 700, 700. quid for the Falcon. <laughs> yeah, and somebody will pay 700 quid for the Falcon. Pre-order, well. pre-order, the whole, the whole yeah. 700 up front, but you never, but you never oh, see a yeah. Vulcan. Yeah, and then disappear into their um, the holiday home. Don't even get me started on By Gone Well. <laughs> Such a twat, isn't he? Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> did I just say that loud? Um, <laughs> I apologise, I apologise, yeah. So it shows you to look around. Um, and yeah, so future for 2022, so catalogues two and three. Um, go to you first, James, because Sam's been put under pressure um, all the time here. Um, what are you thinking is going to come the rest of the year? Do you think they'll stick to their um, release schedule now? No. No. I think it'll be close. They'll get it close. you got to you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. It'll be close. Let's, let's see how these releases go. If they can stick to the window for these ones. And that'll determine how the rest of the year goes. Um, they've already said that there's three Falklands um, yeah. bits of kit. So whether or not we're going to get two of them together in the next catalogue or spread out through the year. One's got to be a helicopter, isn't it? It has to be. Yeah. I can't, they're not going to be, release a Skyhawk. Yeah. It's unlikely to be a Harrier because we've got the 148 Harrier. So it'd be foolish to release a 172 old mould Harrier when you've got that. It's likely, it's, but a Wessex would be. A Wessex, I think, is going. I think, yeah. A Wessex, Wessex is seeking. Yeah, yeah um, we've, 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 already chin, got a, we? we've already got a seeking, haven't we? For the we've, got the, we've got the lone Chinook that made it. Um, they wouldn't re release that. They're not going to release a Picara, Jay, uh, Jace. I mean, unless that unless they've had a nervous breakdown, they're definitely not going to release an Argentinian Bucara. <laughs> I don't know what you're smoking, mate, but you need to run some of it to Romford. Yeah, um, but I think 
We've got the P51. We've got a Vulcan. We've got a Short Sterling. I doubt we're going to see any more Bomber Command. I think that's it for Bomber Command. The Sterling is, yeah. is it. We've not seen one for 10 years. They've given us a, te- a, a, a Sterling now, and that's it for the year. We're not going to see another P51, I, I don't think. Uh, a Vulcan, not a sniff. Spitfire, we know we've got at least a Mark 9, and we've got the T9. I imagine we're going to get just Grey Nurse for now as yeah. the T9. That's it. No more yet. Uh, Mark 9 Spit, That's that could be anybody and anything. We're going to see World War One. That's a given. Yeah. Because Absolutely. World War One, it could sell out. Mm. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, as, as crap as it is, it always seems to sell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just had a uh, suggestion there for Aviation Archive Collector. Uh, he said about Werner Voss's triplane. I think that's a given. It needs to be done. Easy, easy mm-hmm. winner, isn't it? Easy, yeah. easy money. Yeah. I mean, World I, War I'd, I'd love to see the um, the Immel Man or uh, Belka uh, Iron Decker. I think there was one that they actually they actually both flew in. Which would yeah. be put, well, slap both of those names on it. Right. Fly out the door. The, uh, there's that new one. I mean, I'm not, I'm not clued upon World War One, but is it like the the new one that they've just built? Is it like Shuttleworth or Warden or something like SE Five? Yeah, yeah. You know, See, talking it, of old Warden, it wouldn't surprise me a third Bristol fighter in the old Warden scheme. Yeah, really? the the most oh, the most up, the, the most up to date one. Um, yeah, the repainted version, yeah. yeah. It was out of action for about four or five years, wasn't it? Or, or yeah. Silly. And it was completely refurbed. Wouldn't surprise it'd be a great tie-in um, with the number of air shows they do there. What, they've got mm. seven or eight air shows there this year. So, yeah. uh, easy money for me. So we'll rock up with yeah. that. People will be going mental. Oh, yeah. the eyes. Well, we had the eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so, I'm going to go, other than the P-51, the Sterling, the Vulcan, the Mark 9 and the T-9, I think we're going to see helicopter to given. Um, you've got to mix it up a bit. World War One, and a hurricane. Yeah. RFR. Pardon? RFR. No. No. Uh, I think it may be RFGA. Well, we haven't had a desert hurricane in the new mould yet, have we? Um, Other than the creek one, which is technically not really desert. You know, it's a case of looking at what we've got, what sells, what doesn't sell, and then Corgi just, Mm. you know, I don't know, it's a tough one. Typhoons have been coming thick and fast, and they're selling. I wouldn't be surprised if we got another Hawker Typhoon. Right, cool. Pat Paddle Hurricane, I'm up for that. Or a Cobber Cane Hurricane, Battle of France. We've that, got a Cobber yeah. Cane. Oh, we've got a Cobber Cane. That's not Cobber Cane, though, that, the K1, is it? It's an early one, but it's not Cobber Cane. Yeah. I know, yeah. I, know it's been, I know it's been done before, but um, UPW in the new, but in the new Hurricane Mould, I'd mm. absolutely love to see that, because it's, R4, it's one, such one, a... Eight, yeah. yeah, it's such, it's such a staple. You know, yeah. absolutely, absolutely love to see that one. Um, I see it quite regularly buzzing around near where I live. Um, you know, some some they, 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 they like to get that up quite a lot. So yeah, yeah I would. And the same guy is operating this two seat Hurricane this year as well, which is good. So technically speaking, although they're operating out of White Waltham, um, technically speaking, Bucksford would have um, what you put six aircraft, uh, six Hurricanes at Bucksford at some point this summer. Mm-hmm. See, James B. Brown would probably commission that too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's, he comes across a really good guy. The guy who owns... Um, see, as that, far as the whole thing goes, I, the, I had two in mind that I thought you might play on because they seem to sell. One was the new Night Fighter Battle of Britain Memorial Flat Hurricane. Yes, absolutely. They, all, they always sell. Which also um, ties into the new Mark 9 release as well. Yeah, go so to BBMF, a BBMF pair set. I don't know for four hundred yeah. quid. Failing that, the one that's over in Germany, the Silver Hurricane, silver one, yeah, the Rhodesian one, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that is a fantastic bit of kit, and it's the French based one is lovely as well. It's my favourite Hurricane on the circuit, as mm. much as I love UPW. Bob Foster. It's Bob Foster, isn't it? UPW, I yeah. believe. Yeah, Bob Foster. Yeah, um, yeah uh, the what you call it, the. One in France, which is owned by Jeanne Roussens, I think it is. It's up for sale. 
It's the Axe Alpine Fire one, which is a Mark II disguised as a Mark I, I think. I love it. The colour is slightly different to a Battle of Britain colour, uh, but it's a black and white wing. Anything with a black and white wing underneath it, for me, is just amazing. Oh, Christian's just joined. Oh, he's here. He's here. Do you want to join well, yeah, the video, so mate? Just, just say yes, and we'll add you in just for a couple of bits, and you can do, you can do an half-hour rant on why you haven't got an Australian Canberra. <laughs> so that, that's mine anyway. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's flaming glass. I didn't do my bloody camera. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I had to do it. <laughs> Let me try and add you in, Christian. Sorry, bear with me. <laughs> right, let me add you. Carry on talking, lads. Don't worry about me. I so think I, yeah, I on the um, on the on the camera. I think it's. I think it's. Still, I think it's still coming this year. I would. I would say. RGT you know, possibly camera maybe. Is it, is yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. Was announced and then was, cancelled. Yeah, the one that was one that was cancelled a few years back. Why not? People are baying. People are literally baying for blood to have one. Um, if it, if it, I think the RAAF, I, I don't personally think Corgi would dip their toe. I, I think I think probably might be outside, but Argentine because it's because it goes with the Falkland stuff. I think they could use that as a yeah. Okay, it's gonna it's part of the range. It will sell. Um, Chris is saying he looks like he looks like shit. He's just woke up. <laughs> oh, okay, don't worry, mate. Don't no, worry. no worries, no worries. Just sit and watch. Make yourself a yeah. cup of tea or a um, coffee, mate. Forex. Yeah. No stereotypes there at all. Yeah. Um, do do pop in the comments, Christian, if there is anything you want to just throw in. Um, yeah, the, the, the Australian Canberra is still a big possibility, isn't it? You know, um, mm. like I said, though, people have been asking that for a, a ton of years there's been no Canberra release in what it must be close to 10 years now um no i think it's you know it's just started flying again at tomorrow it's a great tie-in thanks mate yeah appreciate <laughs> that james <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry sam i've been to you mate what do you think is going to be coming this year okay so so far the first trimester if you will we haven't seen any luftwaffe i think this well, last year was quite big for it i think it's going to it's going to probably make a comeback but not in the not for the uh, winterized russian stuff i feel like they've they've got that out of their system now you know the the all important anniversary of barbarossa but yes i'm thinking along the lines of sort of desert some desert stuff uh, mottled 110 perhaps yeah uh, i think we could be due another uh, J fifty two, the old the old Iron Annie. I think I, I think that's that would be absolutely fantastic to have, particularly one from because you know we've had I mean, we had the um, was it was it with the creep was it a creep one that we had yeah that was before? beautiful James that was that was James lovely was online tonight but James but one of, one of obviously Kira knows him uh, Elliot knows him really good lad um, he's got that one the bastard uh, and it's one I never got the creep one it's probably the one that, alongside the winter the loveliest mm. release of the lot yeah it's it's an absolute stunner and they do they do they do absolutely sell out especially when they went after um hitler's one bit of a controversial thing to to go after but wow you, didn't you, it sell you, you well can't, though yeah, you can't, Matt, Matt's just joined as well can't find got it all, got all my air show groupies on with me when i say groupies i mean we don't have like mass sex or anything like that it's just merely go and like drink and watch planes together so I made it sound really bad, Matt, and I apologies, mate. Um, yeah, so carry on, Sam. Yeah, but as um, so as James touched upon as well, um, World War One, as I already mentioned, I think another Iron Decker needs um, needs to happen, and I know I know I know the one I the one I most definitely want, but it's not really a an exciting scheme, but it's just for the for the history of the pilots and the 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 pioneers of um, aerial dogfighting. I think it would be absolutely fantastic, really. In terms of bomber commands, I think we've, as as we've mentioned, we've we've pretty much, we we, we may have already had it, but yeah, yeah, uh, more one forty eight jets because they've 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 got they've rolled them all out now, so we're obviously getting I think a a second typhoon, and if I had to hazard a guess, I might dare I say it, you know, one of the ones that. You know, similar to the ones that Hobby Master have gone after, so maybe like an op, an op shader release. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, something. LME is the one that I think a plain grey jet sort of 
I know, yeah. I know for me, it don't exactly excite me. Yeah, bit, uh, perhaps perhaps a bit humdrum. I mean, the, the first one, the um, uh, the one, the, the, the sort of the Battle of Britain scheme, the Gina, as it's as it's known, seems to always do very well when, where, wherever it appears in whatever form. But personally, it's not one for me. I, I prefer, I prefer a, a grey operational jet with maybe just a few splashes of colour. But that's just me. Everyone has their own sort of personal taste. But I think we're going to get a plain-ish... Um, 148 Eurofighter as well to to go in there with the um, with, with a full set of ordnance, which is going to be quite an important thing to have for the 148. It's going to really set it off. Uh, possibly another another Phantom, but no, uh, we, we shall see. Time will time Black will sort of on that one. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it. It's difficult because you know you know what the what the new toolings are. It's just what's gonna what's going to raise its head again. Um, personally, I'd, I'd like to see some of the interwar stuff because it's not, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have any, but it's, it's certainly, there's certainly ones that they sort of put out there, didn't do too well. And then they took them all away again, which is unfortunate, but you know, Hawker Heart, stuff like things of that nature. Love some of my favorite models. Mm, and I've very, got all very the silver winds models and they're absolutely stunning. Yeah, fact, very, I like very them so underrated. much. I bought two of pretty much everything, and um, I'm only selling them now. So. <laughs> that's it. I would love to see some lend lease stuff. I think there's some fantastic lend lease stuff that Corgi has in their tooling bank, but they just they won't they won't release it because they're probably too frightened. But yeah, you, you could almost put together a whole lend lease range and not have to invest in any new models. You just have them all there re waiting to go. There's like a great sub theme that you could introduce, but one thing I won't. say, I don't, I don't know if you know like the American Warbird scene. The guy called Rod Lewis, big Texan millionaire, he's got a B25 in Russia, um, Russian markings, and oh my god, it is pure sex, absolutely beautiful. So you've got Russian P40s. There's actually forces of valor are getting on that. They're releasing a white P40 as well um, as one of the first releases in their P40 retail, um, which looks pretty damn sexy as well but you're absolutely right you know obviously we've got the spitfire um, i was looking at mine funny enough i've got all my russian stuff on the table um mm. i've got p40s p39s spitfire uh hurricane uh, all yeah. different. Uh, and there's some amazing bits in there but you know you talk to the bombers like the a20s they use um i mean that might be something for hobby master because obviously they got it um the the mitchells obviously they use mitchells as well um i don't know what other bombers they really use what other american aircraft and they had a couple of Mustangs, didn't they? But only I think they only had like four on um, what you call they it. Did, they did have a they did have a, a Thunderbolt or yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, a few of them. Uh, the Air, the Air Cobra as well. So yeah, 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 I've got a couple of them as well. They're lovely, really, really lovely. Spitfires, Hurricanes, Hamptons, yeah. Dakotas, mm. Lancaster. Yeah, so, so, much so so much. Anyhow, sorry, I'll bet you might be quick. So I've, my predictions, um, I'm trying to think what I put on model Hangar 3, and Christian might be able to help me out here. So I've gone for Night Fright, the Dakota. Um, but I wouldn't mind seeing the um, new BBMF scheme, which is due to come out, I believe, next year now. So they may be called you a hold off. I mean, they've done the previous two BBMF ones, so um, that would be cool. Um, a JE-52 Low Countries Invasion um, scheme. Uh, some really, really lovely schemes there. Or a really strong desert-looking uh, JU-52. I don't know if they, what desert schemes they've got for them, but I think that'd be a good tie-in as well with the ME-110. A modelled ME-110 would be uh, 110 would be lovely. Um, I also said about a 148 Phantom. I think the next one could either be Black Mike or the Raspberry Ripple one. So nobody's done a Raspberry. I can't believe Hobby Master or Gemini never did a Raspberry Ripple uh, Phantom. I've seen a few Code 3s knocking around and it's, it's, it just looks stunning. We've also got the blue one as well. Um, the, the old blue one, which I believe is in a Czech museum. Um, that's a really, really simple yet effective scheme. which looks lovely. Um, in terms of, I, I can't see a Tornado at, at 172. I think that's gone now. I think that's dead. Um, but Kieran's put on there a minute ago. I was going to leave it to the end. A 148 Tornado F3 and a Firebird scheme. I think that looks stunning. I could see that 
sneaking in as a riot release, a react release at some point. I think that could well be a bit of a surprise if it's already been signed off or not. I mean, it's just a guess. I think it's the perfect place to launch it. Um, other than that, we talk about Spitfires. Um, I'm surprised they've gone with Grey Nurse. It's a lovely scheme, but uh, it's a different one to go for. The ones I spoke about was the NHS one, the year all silver Spitfire, MH434, MH424. Mm. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing EP122, which is like a hybrid sort of sea fire scheme. Uh, the one uh, that come out of here, Gozo in Malta, which was at Biggin Hill Heritage Hangar, has gone back to America now. That was lovely. Um, I, try, I mean, there's loads of Spitfire schemes. Johnny Johnson scheme. There, there's so much. You know, uh, a PR11 scheme. A PR pink scheme. I'd even have a pink one with half D-Day stripes. I think it's different and would add something to the collection. Um, Hurricanes. So we talked about the All Black. I think um, Jason mentioned it. The All Black Battle of Britain Memorial Flight one. I think that could be an, an option. But that's the old style uh, Mark II Plus uh, tooling. But that's still brilliant in my eyes. Really, really cool uh, looking aircraft. Johnny Johnson's um, no, no, Lancaster. The old black one was the new mould. The cannons. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, no. no it, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the old mould. No, see, it's, it's an old, it's the middle mould, isn't it? So you've got the old yeah, mould. Yeah, mold. Mark, yeah, Mark II. I've got the Mark II Plus. It's the Mark II uh, to four uh, version. Um, but that would that would be absolutely stunning. Uh, I'd love a Seafire. Realistically, I think I see a second both foot in there as well. Um, I could see another ME 109E, but an all black ME 109E. I think that would really add to the night fight shelf. Um, I could see a couple of the cool uh, Luftwaffe bombers as well. Um, so we've gone through uh, what you call it, the, the, the Russian front. So technically speaking, it'd be Italy, Sicily, um, and desert, I'm guessing. So mm. maybe a desert hindcore or desert Junkers. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, but I think that's it off the top of my head. Night Fright might have to wait a year because mm. I, I don't know whether they're going to finish it this year. I think they need to release it when it's flying. Uh, but that'd be a brilliant looking aircraft to go alongside it. But you're right. You talk about interwar, post-war, something like a vampire or... Um, I, I, I love I love a hunter in one forty eight as well. I think a hunter in one forty eight. Uh, but then also you think of the ultimate fighters at Sywell and Duxford. You know the the P forty seven Nelly and uh, a Bouchon and you know, you know Contrary Mary and P, the P fifty one. I'd love that or the one I said before, Big Dick or Francis Dell. Um, something to add the third P fifty one for Duxford. Um, that I think would be lovely. Then you've got that trio. But there's so much we could say. We could go all night around it, couldn't we, in terms of what we'd love to see. But I just hope that the second one is boom, in your face. Have some of that. We've nailed the first third of the year. This is what we're doing. Get on it. You know? And I just hope that the next one isn't half of what's in this catalogue to, to, to go along again because I think people will start losing confidence in them. Yes, yeah. everybody loves a big dip. They certainly do. I, I think um, I, I think the look, that you know, service, the... <laughs> uh, but I certainly love the P fifty one big dick. Uh, just for pure lulls, everyone loves. Everyone. Oh, we got away with that. Fair play to him. Um, From Sasha. Oh, oh. I've just had an Amazon announcement for my little boy to get to sleep. So get to sleep. <laughs> He's obviously being a little sod tonight. Um, right. So under the next section, uh, the pluses and negatives. I want you to do each a plus and a negative of this catalogue so james can i have your let's start we, we start half full we don't do half empty start with the the biggest plus from this catalogue <sighs> swings and roundabouts the spitfires the spitfires is the biggest plus but it's also the biggest minus yeah it's the biggest plus because we've finally got the spitfires that we've been asking for for years now but it's also the biggest minus because they should have gone all out with these Spitfires and we've had nothing. Yeah. Uh, so that's biggest, the biggest plus and minus. Biggest negative. The same thing. Yeah. Is the is the Spitfires? Which because should have been the highlight becomes. Yeah, something they should have them. they should have gone out with a bang with them Spitfires and you know fireworks off you know the Tower of London and 
you know, and a 14 spit by a fly past. You, you should have gone all out with these two lanes, and they didn't. We got a party little section at the end. It was, it was poor. You know, it was poor. Okay, fair enough. Sam, biggest class? Um, I mean, again, yeah, I find, find myself sort of supporting a lot of what James said. And for me, I'm going to say specifically the TR9. I know a lot of a lot of people think think they're a bit that they're, they're a bit ugly and you know, but for me, for I think they're really, really because because at the end of the day, they're by and large a lot of the Spitfires that you'll actually see. So specifically for me, the TR nine, but then like secondary to that, um, the, the the Vulcans got me got me interested. The price hasn't got me so much interested, but because it's it, it's more it's more than one of the monthlies on on my car, but. <laughs> We're gonna if we can get it if we can get it down, that'll be a, a huge plus um, for me. The negative, it's, I'm not really gonna obviously pick on a particular model. It's just the 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 execution and the way the way that things have come across and the the state of the current state of affairs um, that that we're dealing with. As as James is saying, it should have been, Spitfire should have been front and center, having. Uh, yeah, as I say, that that's probably the biggest negative. Just having three new um, new schemes coming out, you know, that's I know I know they're doing it doing it sort of thirdly, if you will. But yeah, three three new schemes is not it's not ideal. It's not great. So yeah, that's that's probably the biggest the biggest letdown for me. I was expecting at least seven or eight, and that yeah, that for me. So TR nine wicked three schemes. Not so wicked. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to go. My biggest plus um, is the rule of three. So I've pretty much managed by the rule of three. I was born on the third. I grew up in number three Palmers in Coronham. Everything I do, and as a manager, when you set tasks, never go more than three. Never go under three because it's not enough. Three is no. a magic number. And I think they've gone. I think they've gone with the Mark Stringer philosophy with three new toolings each year. I think that's what we're going to see now. I think that's going to set the precedent for where, where we're going to yeah. go with new toolings. So that excites me that, you know, speaking to Michael, I guess they've got a long-term strategy built in with these price mm -hmm. changes as well. I think we're going to see three new toolings every, every turn of year, which I think is exciting for the hobby. Um, bear in mind, obviously, Hobby Master right now have even put a, a squeeze on new toolings as well. That that's, that says a lot, and it so, shows you that actually, as much as we might think Corgi are the the ugly brother or the ugly duckling who's 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 not particularly invited round the table with a big Hornby table, they are putting the money where their mouth is, which is good. I think the real negative for me is the build up and the social media presence. So we did. The, the advent calendar and it built up some excitement there were some days it was really exciting other days we just sort of went <sighs> but after the 24th of December there was radio silence so Airfix were talking about it Skyelectrics were talking about it naturally Hornby were talking about it and what I would say uh, I think Adam is not on there now he sent me some screenshots of the Hornby he's on a Hornby fan page and they're getting a lot of pelters on the Hornby fan page for pricing but Getting back to the social media presence, there was nothing. It wasn't until James asked today what time is the release, and they told him a time and then did a completely different time. Now, if I was – that was – Colby was my baby, I would be shouting from the hilltops, regardless of how many we were releasing today, because it isn't just about – we're just talking about Aviation Archive, right? We're not talking about vanguards. We're not talking about – the military stuff. We're not talking about all the other bits and pieces that tie into it and the toys. Mm. We're, we're talking about a quarter of its business. They didn't do anything. So I mean, they didn't, it just not just about aviation archive. They didn't do anything for Vanguard. They didn't shout and scream about it. Just little odds and sods. And then suddenly the day arrives, it's released at a poor time, which I, I, I five o'clock in the evening, it's happened. People, you know, people who, who collect die cast sometimes collect cars, sometimes collect, Hornby, you know, it, it just sort of, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, why not do it all in one big hit? Because then everyone swarms to a website that can cope with it. And there's that mass interest. You know, we're sitting here now. We've done an hour and 20 minutes talking about 
the aviation archive mm. holding release three new releases right so if we're talking about we've stretched this out and it's flowed but we talked about three new releases right now and we've done an hour and 20 of it where no we don't we're not on corgi's payroll nudge nudge um but we're not um we do this out of love for the hobby mm. where is it now there must be people who are paid to manage those bits what are they doing? Why are they not raising their game? Why are they not going? Look, we've got a massive, we've got a massive opportunity. We're investing this much money in three new amazing toolings. Let's go and shout and scream about it, and let's drive some excitement because that's what this Hornby, is about. This Hornby have their, they have their show on on YouTube. It, it goes on, it goes on for like Hornby. an hour. Like, yeah, Hornby, Hornby have their show on YouTube. Yeah, Netflix have their show on YouTube. Is there a Scalectrics one? I don't know. I ain't got a clue because I don't know how much you can really talk about it. Oh, it's part of Hornby, isn't it? But where's the Corgi one? Where's the Corgi yeah. Collector Club? I Shout think... and scream about it. It's a if... brilliant brand with brilliant product. You know? If the anybody release... from Corgi is watching this video, they should get us three in that boardroom for one meeting. So that we can collectively, as a trio, or as a group, as everybody else that's watching this, pick one plane that they would do. And I guarantee that one plane, as a group that we were to pick, would make them money. Because we do it right. Because we do it for the love of the hobby. Because we enjoy what we do. You know, and that's where they need to step up a bit. They need, they don't have to respond to us. They don't have to get into a debate or a conversation with us, but they at least need to read what people are putting and they need yeah. to sort of quietly acknowledge that if somebody at the top of the Corgi Tower wants to take credit for everything we've done, so be it. If he comes on, you know, the, the Diecast Wings Facebook page and goes, oh, everybody's crying out for this. Oh, everybody wants a condor. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll go make a condor. I'll go make it. Oh, no, I was telling, no, I can't do a condor. Uh, <laughs> you know. What are you doing? <laughs> No, if if he was to, if they were to just listen to what everybody says that they want, did a bit of research on it, I would quite happily let them take all the credit for it. If I would I was, let that guy do it. What I would say is, as much as we've just said that, positivity is infectious, right? Yeah. But so is negativity. And look, I've just seen, I'm going to scroll back to him. So our Australian friend is, is just put, so Christian's put his madness, biggest disappointment in the hobby's history in my view. That's someone who's got a massive collection of aircraft who spent thousands of Australian dollars on his model collection. Yeah, it isn't all Colgi. There's, this, there's bits in there which isn't and Hobby Master and JC and you name it. That's a man who invest, invested his spare money into a hobby that he loves. For someone to write that speaks volumes. I'm trying to be really measured tonight. So where there's positive, where there's negatives, there's always positive. And you've got to focus on the positives in order to move forward, right? It's like life is like that. You can't just, otherwise you get stuck in the rut and you want to end up blowing your brains out. What for me, as you know, and I, I use this when I'm at work and sometimes I get in trouble for being over passionate. If it was my business and I, my name is Mr. Colgi and I'm sitting in that boardroom and I'm going, right, how did your launch go today, lads? And they go, yeah, it was a bit underwhelming, actually. I was mm. like, right, you've got, you got, you got the next catalogue. If you sit in here and you tell me it's underwhelming, you're going to go and you're going to replace him. And that, that's, you know, that's how business works, right? You know, you, we, we've all seen The Apprentice. You know, I, I guess we've seen Wolf of Wall Street as well. It isn't quite at the extremes. But if it's your money and you're backing it, because let's be honest, Hornby were never in an amazing position two, three years ago, and they've turned it around to their credit, so they've done something right keep that momentum going push it push it don't demand you, know, you have to demand the absolute best from your brand yeah because your brand like Ron Sue Wood saying does exactly what it says in the tin it screams what you're about the more passion you throw at it the more energy you, you, you start making people change their minds and stuff because I'm, I'm guessing the people who are dishing out the cash are going right Colby this is all you're getting if you don't like it job on that's what it feels like a little bit to me. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know behind the scenes. We, you know, like I said, we'd love to be a fly on the wall. And it might be that actually everyone's doing that and they're just not getting anywhere. And, you know, sometimes that is the case. But I want to see passion, passion, passion about getting what they've got. You know, they've got a brilliant product. They've got an amazing product. You know, 
you know, we wouldn't be spending an hour and a half at nine o'clock at night talking about this and these people watching and joining in and asking questions doing the same if they didn't give a shit about the product and they've proved they can absolutely <laughs> they've made you change his name um uh they um you know they, they they need to really back themselves and you know we get we we can make it you know we've been i, I sam's made some brilliant points around the well-being your complete state distribution being crap transport transport cost being um you know, going through the roof we've given them all their um you know we've given them all that excuses but now is the time they now need to deliver and you know maybe this is a master stroke maybe it's getting us all going oh yeah and then suddenly april we're like Whoa, this is amazing absolutely brilliant and maybe it could be it could be great psychological warfare on us but right now i mean i've not gone on the forums tonight i've not had the chance um but I can I can tell you what the forums are going to say without even going on them, and everyone's going to be, you know, Ugh. and I mean I said some of the, the crap I've seen yeah. on Facebook tonight, like it's you know it's like my my models are better than yours sort of playground mentality from people on there is embarrassing because actually, no nobody's perfect. Hobby Master are far from perfect. Caliber Wings who yeah. want to, you know who want to be the best don't get it right. You know, JC Wings, exactly the same. You name it, you know, Forces of Valor. Heart's in the right place and they're getting better, but are they perfect? Of course they're not. They make mistakes. They can't, we can't do a, re a catalogue release where every one of the people watching this tonight or on the forums is going to agree and love every release. It's impossible. But what they need to do is try and really, really go after it and show a bit of, it feels like we, ne we need something more. I, I, I don't know about you, but it just leaves me a bit sort of, uh, that's 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 what I feel tonight. I feel like but, I'm yeah. If I'm Corgi, if Corgi that. relay, if they relay that energy, if they if they're going to be if if they if 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 you feel like that, that's how it's come across from them. That's how it. There's just there's there's no there's no passion there, and I feel like even though Corgi Classics ran themselves into the absolute dirt, at least they they had a they had a real go at going after things and having the Corgi Collector Club. And it, bear in mind, th th this was the days before social media, before the days before we could sort of sit across each other and talk to each other on a, on a phone. Th th there was, there was a lot more, there was a lot more there. And it's just, it's really, it's kind of sad that what, what's become of it, but th there we go. And, you know, the price, the price situation is never, is never going to help, um, help anyone because it, it's going to make, it's going to make, even the serious collectors think, well, do I, do I really, really need this? Or, or do I, do I need to put it towards my mortgage, my car, my weekly shop? You know, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so frustrating, but you know, at the same time, really sort of far off in the distance there, there's, there's a little bit, it's, it's with the, you know, with the new Spitfires, the Harry, I, you, you can see, even though they won't come out this year, it hopefully things will get better and i hope they just go back i think the the happy medium is two catalogs a year i think yeah. one people lose interest and the releases don't get there on time i think three is probably too many i think the way they were doing it before january june july december was was perfect with the amount that they're putting out two catalogs is probably the ground where where you want to be and maybe split, have one, one, if you're going to do two or three new toolings, two in one, like one for January, June, and two for July, December. So when it comes to Christmas, they're, um, they're under the tree and everyone from Corgi goes home with a, with a big, big paycheck because they've, because they've done well. So I think two is, two is probably optimum. And I think that they might learn the hard way a bit with this, with this free catalog malarkey because they're never going to be, putting out as many releases no. that, that they, they, they don't have, they don't have the, the capacity to do that. So, you know, three, three catalogs, like a poultry sort of three. I don't, I don't think it's going to work for them. And this year as well, for me, Vanguard's got all the love. Um, I know, we, I know we obviously haven't touched on it. We're all, yeah. we're all aviation fans. I, I do. I, I've got a very, small vanguards collection but it, it it got all the love and more than that ford 
absolutely took it home. They were saying, oh, we're going to do a transit custom, a Mark III focus. And they, they, they got so much, it got so much attention. Even, <laughs> even buses, there is almost as many buses as there was planes. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, what well, I thought Aviation Archive was the real, was the, the real bank. Like, yeah. what's, what's, what's going on? What I would say, I, I think it's really important to come in at this point. So we, we, we're talking about people with passion and I only know one person in Paul Gear, and that's Michael. And Michael is the most passionate man about his job. He, he lives, breathes and shits aviation. He absolutely adores it. And no, he, I know whenever I talk to him, it could be, it could be eight o'clock in the morning, it could be nine o'clock at night. He's always at his computer working, working his ass off. You know, like I spoke to him Sunday night. He just got in from Duxford. He was at Duxford for the Spitfire launch in the 124 for Airfix. Exhausted. Back up first thing Monday morning, getting ready for the range release. He's so passionate about his job and he's a brilliant man. A brilliant, lovely, generous, intelligent guy who cares passionately for the brand. So I know mm. you can't just be the only one in there who's like that. What it no. needs... I, I guess a lot of it all, is all created from the nervousness of Hornby as a business getting into the shit and being yeah. afraid of their own shadow to a degree. They need, they, they, they need more Michaels. Yeah. Nothing is what they need. Enough. And I think, you know, you know, Michael, like I said, you know, he helps develop the, the schemes. You know, look at the bow fire, for example, right? When that first came out, I know James probably isn't your your, you know, it doesn't tick your boxes. A lot of people looked at it and gone, what, a Malaysian scheme bow fire is your second release. It's come out, people are losing their minds over how good it is, right? Yeah. Um, apart from Jason, who's weighing it for some weird reason. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's okay. It doesn't weigh as much as the others. <laughs> oh my God, it's half a gram lighter, that's a disgrace. Um, <laughs> Obviously, Jason don't talk like that. He's he's an Ipswich fan, so he's a bit. Who <laughs> are <laughs> um, yeah, well, you sorry, doing in this concrete now, Mister? Who are you? 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 Um, he traded in his um, his Fiesta for a combine harvester. It's okay. He's weighed it, <laughs> <laughs> but no. On a serious note. What an absolute beautiful release. The, bear with me. I know Matt is probably still online. I haven't got this out. I've only got this out of the box. This, as provided by Lofty's Hobbies, um, is an absolute stunning release. Both of them. Brilliant, did, uh... brilliant finish. Brilliant what? detail. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. They can do it. And no, so let me grab the, the last Hold on. Oh, there he goes. He's off. When was that? Like, the last... Balls up, I guess, was probably the Wellington, right? And I know that really upset you, James. Really? Oh, what have you got there? Really oh, stunning. Yeah, there you go. With the no, rockets, with the great. rockets underneath as well. Um, fuel, fuel tank fit is really nice. Oh, the fit is brilliant. And the finish, top notch. Can't, See, I'm, I'm, nothing, I'm, no I'm negative. I'm in the box for a review later in the week. But look, Matt, nah. Matt there is creaming his pants on the, on the brisk fit. Um, he loves it. And, you know, both of them are brilliant. Um, and it's got me into World War One aircraft, which I never said I would. So, the, you know, the, it's there. The, the detail is there. And, you know, if Hobbymaster didn't exist, but they do, obviously, would, you know, Corgi probably would have got away with this a little bit. But they don't. So everyone, you know, like I said, on the Facebook pages, it's like, yes, Hobbymaster released 12 a month. Great jets, yeah. <laughs> No, don't, no, no, that there might be one or two. I look at that and go, they're yeah, brilliant, but I wouldn't go, oh, fantastic. They're brilliant models. Let's, let's be honest. Hobby Master nail it nine times out of ten now. Um, but there's this, uh, you know, the competition is out there. You know, Hobby Master could, if they wanted to, start ch churning out the molds that Cool Gear are doing now. The Tornado was a perfect example, right? So they're not afraid to tread on Corgi's toes. And this is why Corgi have got to be on top of their game in terms of what they're doing, getting the releases out quickly, and also not going crazy on pricing as well. Um, it's, today's releases were so inspired, I brought, a, I brought the bristle. Well, you won't be released. You won't be, you won't be released. You won't be disappointed, my good friend, because it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, it's mm. a real... 
uh, a real, real stunning uh, release. Look, before we get to the next bit, has anyone got any questions I want to ping on the bottom of the um, uh, on, on bottom of the, uh, the the chat there, and I can we can get to them. So um, before we do a few first. So Kieran's been online, and he's put the one seventy two Victor. Why don't Corgi do that? I I personally think. It's going to come. I think they're probably working on getting the tooling right, getting the mixture of plastic and metal right. I could see that maybe next year. I don't, when's the Gulf War anniversary? Is it 90? Uh, we just, just started, it, haven't this, we? This year, it's this year. 91. 20, oh, shit. 21. Too late, yeah. 92, isn't it? Yeah, it's too late for that then. Hold up. Two, hold up. 20, uh, no, it's this year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, ignore that then. Yeah, so maybe we'll have to wait 10 years for it. But I can see the, the VIX are being developed. I don't know about you guys. Or it could be a secret tooling for the Falklands. Uh, I, I think we're probably being a bit too adventurous. Yeah, yeah. Much, we're, 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 yeah. we go with it, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the shark, up, uh, Christian just asked, what do you lads reckon over the shark? I think it's dead. Dead as a dodo, personally. I, I can't see it being released this summer. When was the last... Uh, see Harrier release ten years ago. Oh crikey, we're going way back. Yeah, I way can't back. See it being released. To be honest with yeah, you. it was a long, long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, well, is, he, is he on about? Is he on about the new the the one forty eight? No, the new one won't be sharp. It's only going to be a GR five onwards or a GR three. I don't know. It's a GR something. Um, well, no, so, we, yeah. GR four, the GR three, and the uh, AV eight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. the tooling is developed. To, yeah. yeah, I can't see the shark coming out. Um, uh, Jason earlier said so the 148 buck was announced by Airfix today. Do you think that's going to be next? I think it's there or thereabouts. I think it's going to be. I, I personally think Tornado will come before Buccaneer and Jaguar, to be honest with you. The Buccaneer is a beast in 172. Just imagine it in 148. Mm. That would be pure sex. Um, but again, yeah. You know, it could be two hundred quid's worth a model yeah. with the with the air brake as well. It'd be fantastic! Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Kieran's also asked um, uh, one of, one of, uh, Christian might lose his mind over this one. The uh, RAF Canberra PR nine. I think that would be an absolutely fantastic release, but I don't know whether the tooling can be adapted or not for PR nine. On well, it's, we an don't old, know. It's, it's an old casting now, though, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's getting yeah, it's it's it is it's getting on. Um, we we we're assured time and time again that it's it's there, it's viable. The latest one, they they made, they brought it up in the little advent calendar Q and A thing they did. Um, so we, we we're assured that it that it exists, but continue to not see it. I don't know. I think there's a. I think they're they're, they're planning something for it. Whether they whether they've said had a sat sat down yeah, had a boardroom meeting and said. We're gonna we're gonna one forty eight it. Who knows? No, that's that that, 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 nice could be, that, that could be a thing. You know, it'd be, well, it'd be real nice to see, and you get you get. I think people are people are going nuts over it personally. So I mean, as much as the original tooling looks looks great, it is. It's been a good few years. So and they don't and they've stopped putting out one seventy two jets. That's not that's not Corgi's thing anymore. So it seems so. I think that makes it even less likely to appear, at least in 172. But it, it'll be it'll be massive, you know. And yeah, maybe maybe Hobby Master when they finally finish their moratorium on new toolings, maybe Hobby Master will come out come after it and say, "Look, we're, we're going to have the um, we're, we're we're in town now." As as I said with Calibre and the U2, we're we're in town now. Move move aside. You've taken too long. We can get it out in. A matter of months, a, a reasonable-ish cost, and that's that's business. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. Absolutely, that's, that's if you can jump ahead, why not? Look, that's all the questions I've had uh, from everybody on tonight. So, uh, massive thank you to everyone who's contributed. Um, obviously, and thanks to the two lads, James and Sam. Um, before we end it, just going to talk through something that I want to do going forward. So, um, we've had a little chat about doing something like this on a weekly basis, but having a sort of set agenda and a rolling lineup uh, and keeping it to an hour. I mean, like tonight we've gone over an hour and a half again. Um, but I want to call it Wings Weekly, where we literally have different guests on it. It doesn't necessarily have to be me. So 
uh, obviously Dan and Gary, uh, who aren't on tonight, uh, often on, on chat. Uh, Christian's come on, obviously James and Sam. Uh, and there's loads of different collectors out there as well. And a few have been on tonight, the likes of Kieran, Elliot, Matt, you know, a lot of the guys I go to air shows with, you know, who, who work in the industry, are all collect models. So I want it to be almost like a chit chat. Uh, and I want to quit Wings Weekly and I'm still working on it and I want to kick it off ideally and hopefully Colgi will watch this and take some note. I would like to kick it off ideally with an interview with Colgi. Um, I, I hope that's something you guys will be really interested in seeing. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want this to be a moaning forum. And uh, ultimately we can go very much glass half full or half empty rather than half full. And, it's it, it's important to try and bring balance there, yeah. like we did with the the price rises. That you know they don't just do it for pure profit. They do it because actually, in a lot of cases, they have to in order to survive yeah. and order to invest in new toolings. So if we weren't say, if we weren't passionate, we wouldn't we wouldn't be on moaning. It's like it's because we're so passionate about the hobby, and even just Corgi as a brand that we're here doing doing what we're doing. You know, if we, if we weren't, then we then we just we just probably let it leave it alone but absolutely you know i think corgi needs to take notice of that to be honest but it's not i suppose it's not bashing because we want the best for them don't we absolutely absolutely and you know like even though we've had a, a little bit to to challenge tonight i think it's the best way for it. Now i'm talking management talk here now and opportunities that's the other one when, it, when you've, you've done something crap have you, have you ever heard the praise sandwich where you start good do the rubbish stuff in the middle and then finish on a positive. You no, know, they've done some amazing stuff. The quality of the products I've just showed you, amazing. Absolutely top tier. So, you know, there's so much positivity. Um, but I want to do this Wings, I want to call it Wings Weekly. It's in the name, obviously, Diecast Wings Collectors. Uh, I want it to be Wings Weekly. And then it'll be a rolling lineup of different people each week talking about their hobby, you know, talking about their favourite models, what got them into the, the passion of to, uh, model collecting, talking about the latest releases, reviewing latest releases, you know, talking about potential catalogs, you know, and all, all different things in the industry. Um, so it's something I'm going to roll out in the relatively, in relatively in the next few weeks. Hopefully I can speak mm. to Michael and get the poor man on for another um, harassment. I'm um, oh, sorry, interview. Um, yeah. If we can get David as well, that'd be brilliant. Um, if we can get anybody else from within Colgate, that'd be fantastic. Um, just from my, my point of view, it isn't about um, interrogating them. It's about, actually asking and getting them because they've got some great ideas but they don't get a chance to really talk about it michael does his diecast diaries but he doesn't get a chance yeah. to um to literally talk about it very often they don't do things like this um you know because i really enjoy this and this is a way out from doing a quite stressful job uh, and having a little bit of a kickback and doing my what is my hobby and my love so uh, hopefully it's something you guys will be interested in but so keep an eye out for it um over the next few weeks um Thank you all for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Massive thank yeah. you to James and Sam for coming on and taking so much of your time. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to chat to like-minded individuals, including everyone who's contributed tonight. This is what it's about. This is why I do it. I don't do it just yeah. so I can sit in my room on my own and just mutter to myself. It's no, great. And to thanks, and thanks for organising it, Mark, and, and for, for pulling all the strings, for, for running the page and doing, doing everything that you do. Um, yeah, thank you. No, cheers. Cheers, mate. No, 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 thank you guys, because I can't do this. You know, I wouldn't do it unless people liked it. If they didn't like it, it'd be a waste of my time and yours. So, look, thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely week. Don't get too despondent. There's another catalogue out in three months' time. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be even bigger and better. Uh, 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 from Romford. Mark 9. So, the Mark 9 Spitfire, the new tooling. Let's play a guessing game. Go on the, uh, the the DWC page. We'll have a guessing game. What you reckon the first scheme will be for the Mark? I'm not allowed to enter it. Yeah, I know you won't. I, I, yeah, yeah, I know you're not allowed to enter it. We'll see who gets it right. We'll do like a, a prize pool or something. We'll put a few okay. quid in. Whoever gets it right gets the prize. They can have the plane. Okay. In which case, I'll see if I can do something with Colgi for that. Let me chat to Michael. I'm going to try and see if we can get one of the pre pros. I don't know if we can or not. And we'll put it up for a prize on the uh, on the page. And then I'll guess it myself. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know if I can or not, but I'll, I'll speak to see if Corgi, look, what a great time. If they can come on and do a chat and provide something like that for a winner of a competition. But I can't promise it. But if not, I'll tell you now, 
if not, I'll finance a Spitfire. Not necessarily the new one, but I'll finance a Spitfire myself. Nah, no, no, oh gosh. So I'll do that myself. And uh, that's, you know, but hopefully Colgy can. No, no, I think we'd say no more. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, we do that nearer the time. Um, I think we do it for the next catalogue. But yeah, it's a fantastic idea. Um, look, anyhow, look, I'm going to leave you, love you and leave you. I've got to be in work in seven hours or so. Yeah, so I'm I'm I'll go to bed. Um, cheers, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I will post this on Either the page everybody. on Facebook and on YouTube. Yeah. Much love. Thanks for, Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.